And we are back. Consistency is key. I am Baron J67. I'm T Jones. We, 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 we just going to keep it pushing. <laughs> We're going to keep it pushing, man. We do what we can when we can, and we make it happen. Folks, you have to understand this is Adventures of the Black Nerds, and I am on the go. I am mobile. I'm away from my workstation, so I had to bring it with me. Mm-hmm. So I sound any different than I normally do. Just a little bit. This is why. This is why. Just a little bit. I am on the go. We'll be all right. But uh, first, let's uh, shout out uh, Tone Deaf Network. Oh, yeah. Shout out everybody out. Um, Much love to the family. Nerds Noir doing big things. Bro, it, oh, I totally forgot about that. That's doing terrible. Big, how are you just going to forget about your brand? I know, my own brand. <laughs> my own <laughs> brand. I have my own brand, folks. Nerds Noir. Okay. N E R D Z. N O I R nerds new R gear by us. Okay, so this was a conversation we should have had uh, 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 off stream or off uh, the podcast. But gotcha. now explain to the people what nerds new R means because I had a guy ask me about it a uh, couple of days ago, and um, I explained it to him as best as I could. And okay. he he seemed to catch it after about twenty minutes of talking to him about it. Gotcha. So explain to him what does it mean. Okay. Now and let me paint the picture. This was a um, a younger white fellow. He was real cool. He was a gamer as well. He played a yeah. lot of sports games. So I I'm trying to sell it to him. Now, okay. So explain it. Uh, well, for my people out there, this is basically the brand nerd brand gear for people who look like me and you um for people whether it's black brown even i want my caucasian folks to jump in on this Mm -hmm. because it's it's just offering a different segue into apparel mugs and accessories i'm not gonna i'm not putting the it's i'm white labeling now so it's the brand is nerds noir i want you to think oh man Anytime there's uh, any blurs out there, any nerds out there, I want you to feel comfortable showing everybody who you are on your apparel, whether it's a hat, backpack, T-shirt, uh, keychain, sticker, you know, pin, all of that. It's all that's what it is. I want it to be a brand known. Now, the reason I went with Nerds Noir is because it's the most non-black way of saying black nerds. Hmm. Okay. Noir means night. Noir are black. You know, yeah. uh, it's it's the most appealing. Uh, it's the most uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, open way of saying black nerds. Okay, I feel like nerds noir will go more and go further than labeling my brand black nerds are blurs. Yeah, blurs only. Because we and we we do have that with the podcast. So yeah. You know, Adventures of Black Nerds is what we're here and for. I had Holy to explain shit. to this guy because I, in conjunction of talking about Nerds Noir and talking about uh, the the podcast, I was explaining to him that yes, our podcast is called the called the Adventures of the Black Nerds because we're black nerds. Yeah, that's what it, we are. It's something we created. It wasn't a. This wasn't manufactured somewhere. It was just an idea. We sat down. We have these conversations, and we decided to record them. Now, how I was explaining Nerds Noir was this in the same way, because yeah. I I remember the example. I watched you explain what Nerds Noir meant to to a, a fellow, and you said. Uh, for gear that for people that look like us and he said like us he was like he said like us like who or something like it to that regards and you said and then i looked at him said exactly no oh yeah you said exactly and (laughs) how i took it and that's how i was trying to explain to the to the dude the young fellow i really do forget his name but like hey listen it's nerd gear and and it, it can fit for anybody Anybody exactly. in the this realm, this space, and that's how I was explaining it to him. So I just and, wanted to clear yeah. the confusion, and, and maybe there, and there's very specific like I do have gear that is clear as day for the black nerds or blurred community. I have mm. you know I got a design that says blurred life. Yeah, like you know it is there. I'm not trying to ignore the the sole purpose of it, but at the end of the day, nerds noir. I want that to be a household name. Yeah. I want it. 
I want you to, every time you go to a conference, I want all groups of people to be thinking about, oh man, what can I pick up? Oh, I can go pick up a Nerds Noir t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then the beauty of it is me going through uh, Teespring to uh, to push my e-commerce, my, my brand, it's it gives me opportunity to have big and small, uh, big and tall sizes. I mean, oh, okay. my t-shirts go up to 5X. I'm a big guy. Mm -hmm. So that was the very first thing I wanted to do when it came to putting out the brand. I wanted to make sure to have a wide spectrum because you see a lot of cool stuff on the internet um, but most of the times the biggest size is two X and three X on a good day. Mm. And the three X fits more like a extra large. Okay. So, you know, I wanted to make sure regardless of what logos and designs I put out there, I wanted to make sure to put, put my best foot forward for people who look like me, whether it's physically, whether it's, um, you know, ethnic, you know, the physical, I want, I want them to. I want you to feel good wearing it. I want you a solid, comfortable T-shirt, hoodie, um, good material, and I. That's that's why I went the route I went. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. The nerds true noir. definition of nerds noir. Please go right. ahead and cop your merch. Yes, it is <laughs> all there. Everything from coffee mugs to hoodies. Everything's in the description below. Now, uh, we uh, can officially start. <laughs> yeah, we uh, can officially jump I, in. I wanted to start off by saying rest in peace to the late, great Nipsey Hussle. Uh, yes. Tragic situation, tragic situation. But um, yes. I just rest wanted to peace. say that because uh, I felt like we needed to. It was yeah, something man. that we just had Real to. influential guy, man. Mm -hmm. Even out, Especially outside of his music. Exactly. So... We'll start off by that. Now, um, what have you been playing? Okay. That was something we talked about as well. Yeah. So lately I've been jumping on to um, the Division 2, mm. one of the many games I said I was not going to buy. That yeah, I you play. caved. I caved so hard. But the reason I was able to cave is I it was a birthday gift. Somebody gave me a gift card, and it was the right amount. And I was like, you know what? I'm not putting my own money into it, so I'm going to go ahead and buy it. And it isn't I, it funny how you could just just how certain things makes it easier to justify those oh, stuff? Bro, bro you, you, know, you know me. I'll rationalize just about anything. He said, it wasn't my card number. Yeah, it wasn't my card number, you know, but it was still funds that were transferred to me that I decided to use hey, man. on to the Division Two. Live your best but, life. Exactly. But one thing I will say is I do not regret it one okay. bit. The Division 2, anytime I'm actually playing my game, I'm playing the Division 2. Okay. It is, this is the first time I've, not the first time, well, in a, in a shoot and loot type of universe, because we got plenty of those. We got um, Destiny, we got The Division, we got, you know, I can, I can keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the first time where I feel they didn't get rid of the stuff that made it great. They just simply added to make it better. Okay. Um, the the environment, there's actual colors. It, it's not Fallout 3-ish, one color, one night. Like, yeah. The environment. They did mention that in the, yeah. the, the things, the, the, the developer streams on it. They did yeah. mention that. And then uh, the Dark Zone. I haven't been to the Dark Zone. I just hit level 11. You could go at level 10, but I was running with some guys and we were just running uh, missions. On, you know, I'm trying to get as strong as possible. Yeah. But the game is legit hard in a good way. It's not frustrating hard, but I, I, there's plenty of times where I'm just walking on a way to a mission and I feel like I get in a mission mm. and I'm getting my money's worth. Okay. So I'm thinking I'm doing a bunch of major missions. And these are either just side quests or control points that oh, are popping up. Yeah, you you going and down it, the path of Baron Jonesism. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know me. I'm a loot, so, bro. I loot like nobody. Said, does. I'm, so, I'm going fishing, guys. <laughs> bro, I, if for and for those who don't know, I have two, pro, more than that. There's two games that I've sat and streamed where I was just fishing in the game. Like legit fishing, Warframe, yes, folks, Warframe, the ten o mech shooter. I have a stream where it was an easy hour of fishing, and people watched. It he said, fun. "Bro, uh, you want to do this mission? Nah, man, I'm gonna I'm just go fish. Yeah, I'm gonna go fish. I'm gonna go. You know I'm how go upsetting fish. that is." 
<laughs> we like playing everyone. games, killing aliens, trying to get gear, and he says, "Nah, I'm just gonna go fish." I'm gonna just go. I, I gotta go rank up, collect this loot. I said, "Boy, I'm mad. I'm mad." <laughs> hey, that's that's just that's just how I play, man. And that and see the beauty of it all is, I am getting dope loot drops. Oh, the loot system. That's probably the biggest highlight for me. Yeah, is the um, looting system. Okay. So here it is. Anything I'm using a majority of, that's what is dropping for me majority. Oh, okay. They'll throw, in, they'll throw in, of course, some random guns just to mix it up. But seriously, whatever is the most used, that's what I've been getting. Now, I don't know if I'm just a lucky son of a gun or if that's – I'm guessing that's in-game mechanics because I bring it up to everybody I party up with. Yeah. And uh, um, even the joining up system is pretty dang dope. Mm. Being able to just let people know, like, hey, I'm struggling. I need help. And you put up a signal and any and everybody can just jump in and help you out um, at any given time for the, for the most part. Yeah. I haven't seen a moment where you couldn't. And that's actually how I've been running through the game because on a sad note, not too many people in my party, um, in my friends list, are playing the game. Yeah. Now, I haven't looked at the numbers but I have a pretty diverse group of um, friends. So to see it not be a, for it to be as new as it is and the type of game that it is, for it not to be a majority of the people playing, it's kind of disheartening. But one thing I will say is I haven't, I've never had a hard time finding somebody to run with. Mm -hmm. And I've never had a, uh, I've never felt alone. And I'm gonna tell you one thing. I know that I know they're gonna create, or if they haven't already, I'm pretty sure there's some website out there, some LFG group or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I, I now I haven't been keeping up with it, but the one thing that kind of deterred me from getting it from the rip was the uh, like the the raids, the eight man party raids and stuff like mm. that. Are those in it now? Have you? I know you're not really a raider, but yeah, I'm not a raider. Um, I've, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be absolutely butchering this. But I want to say the raid drops this month. Okay. Um, if and not, that's what the, they said. I want to say like the twenty third for some reason. Okay. Twenty third, twenty fifth is what's coming to my mind because I, I have seen something about that. Now, for a game that at this point, because let's be honest, for a game that's incomplete, because that's what it is. If the one component, the major component you offered as a selling point isn't there at day one, in my book, it's incomplete. Yeah. Um, for an incomplete game. It is fun as fuck. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> right. these games are. I think these games are doing that because they're trying to keep. They're trying to keep this whole like live, like weekly, mm -hmm. you know, status game idea, World yeah, of Child Warcraft, is, uh, yeah, you know, type idea in play with you know games that we play now because you have to play it uh, especially people like me who like are dedicated to this one game you know hey, oh the reset is tomorrow i need to finish my milestones type mm -hmm. deal you know uh it forces people to jump on and play you know the i used to be in that same boat man. yeah i oh and that's something that they do as well there's like bounty hunter there's bounty hunts yeah there's uh in Something that made me happy. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you good. Um, going back to the loot drops, I'm here. It is. I haven't been to the dark zone yet, and I'm already getting purple or exotic weapons. Yeah, and that I've was got, something that they made emphasis on that you could just literally play the story and get in game loot, which uh -huh. I thought was cool because you know not everybody like you're talking about you know sc scarcity and playing with like your friends and playing this specific game. Um, it's, it's, it's more difficult than, um, people may think because some, and then it's, it's only, it's only difficult for people who aren't uh, variety streamers or variety gamers yeah. in a sense, because if my friends, all my friends play the same game, we're going to always play the same game True. together. Whereas if I got a whole bunch of people that play different games and I play different games, I can't expect people to buy every game that I buy because they may not be that interested as I am in it. So I can and, understand and, that. And you know what? And that's also why I don't I don't like recommending games to people. Mm -hmm. um, because as much, I, as much as I'm loving this game right now, I could put it down and never play it again and be just fine. Yeah. Not, and that's just me personally. That's how I am with just about all my games. There's a few 
that I religiously go back to because it just truly grabbed me. You know, Massive Chalice, Skyrim, you know, so Final Fantasy So tactics. listen, bro. So when, when you go... I mean, okay, this is going to segue a little later. We'll talk about... Uh, because the problem that I have is that I can't afford to keep up with this. <laughs> I Got can't you. afford to keep Got up you. with my Xbox, with my PlayStation, Got with you. my PC. My head hurts. I got a yeah. I got a notification the other day saying, "Hey, you haven't you haven't resubscribed for your Xbox Live. Would you like to input your credit card?" I'm like, what? "No, man. I got a headache, dog. I just bought some other stuff." <laughs> I'm telling you. So, um, okay, so well, I was I I was cool with the division. I liked the way they push the game um i didn't like the fact that the game came out early for some rather than a you know that kind of that kind of was a little disheartening but it, it was disheartening for a general sense not for me specifically yeah, but yeah. because like people who played the game were behind you know day one um but at the same time it it was put in a way where they easily could catch up you didn't have to play you know the PVP content, which I heard they have now. They have like a four v four, like suppression squad. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Now, which, of course, you know I'm not. Yeah, and not it thing. it looks fun. It's just more so what I in a game like that where every millimeter of a st- stat on your gear matters for something. I wonder how that plays in PVP. Like, because, do you nerf it or do you let it run wild? Yeah, or do you completely strip those perks from these weapons? You know what I'm saying? And make at it the a, same time, I'm so sorry I cut you off. No, nah, because uh, I get ahead. you. Go ahead. At the same time, you got to you gotta make it different. Otherwise, I'd rather go play Gears of War. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cover if shooter, gonna, that's exactly what it shoot, is. I'd rather go play Gears of War where that whole game is cover shoot and i don't have to grind for certain weapons and certain skills just to have them become null and void yeah you know so um but one thing i hope and i actually look forward to trying out now that you brought that up is i i i don't want to be nerfed too hard Mm -hmm. now if you want to scale like leveling okay i can i can see that i can see that like you, everybody gets a, a soft level of twenty as soon as you jump in yeah. to what's it called. But then you're, but then that's where your numbers differ. Like, yeah, oh, because ads, that's exactly what crit this ad. You know, I would ex- love to see that. Exactly what I'm talking about because I seen a guy he got decked out in a full set of gear, right? Mm-hmm. Not all of not of the all same same piece, but he had like a stat bonus for submachine guns that, in a sense, gave him like. Almost two hundred percent damage increase with a submachine nice. gun. Now think about that. You go into this mode with that gun and that setup. I'm Swiss cheesing people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's more so like, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? Like, and, is, is there like a level, like you said, bringing the level cap down or scaling it to where everybody's on the same playing field just for this activity? So like, we're all at two hundred health, or we all are at one fifty health. And but do these stats work? Do these weapon perks work in the and, game that way? Because you know, it's just you can run rampant in there. Well, let me tell you, because we're living in this game as as a service world on console, mm-hmm. you know, things such as um things such as uh like wow ish. Um, yeah. I want that. I want my stats. Um, not necessarily like your level stats. Okay, I, you still got to make the playing field semi decent. Yeah, you know, um, semi decent doesn't have to be over the top. Well, think about with Destiny, um, Destiny Two, and the Crucible. Mm-hmm. If a weapon has a certain perk, the perk is still going to kick in. Yeah, of course. Now, yes, your shields aren't going to be stronger than my shields mm-hmm. unless it's a class thing. But for the most part. Perks work. So yeah. I want my perks on my guns to still work. If my sniper rifle has a longer scope, I want it to have a longer scope. Yeah. If it has more increased thump, if it cheeses armor, I want it to cheese armor. Yeah. If uh, the body, the backpack I have protect, uh, gives me a boost to my technology, 
to my skills. I want my turret to shoot harder than yours. Yeah. I I I like the idea of that, and I know it at some point it can run rampant, but we already see worlds and games where that's a thing that doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just get better, get better. Yeah. Like Dark Souls. I mean Dark Souls, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, like I can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Like literally whoever has the better because it ain't even the higher level either, because I've jumped in the World of Warcraft and got killed by a freshly level ten guy. Yeah, like he jumped, yeah, you, he you gotta, you know, the saying yeah. the saying yeah. goes, you gotta have thumbs. Like if you don't have yeah. thumbs, you, you you can have the best gun in the game, you're still gonna lose. And you're still you know? gonna. And I I do understand that. I, I think I'm more so leaning towards that because I like that idea. You're playing this mm-hmm. power fantasy game to have power. So yeah, get, keep let me keep my power. You know, I just think we'll see when comparing like these different perks. You know, getting and then that takes time, obviously. And I always say yeah. with these with these looter shooters and these uh, RPG games, most of the, the most of the the stuff you acquire isn't based off of skill. It's based off of time played. You play the game long enough, you're yeah, going to get some good. Mold. Exactly. So you get a good gun with this stat and then you find gear that boosts that stat. You know, you just put the time in to acquire this. You know, I seen a guy with like a machine gun loadout and everything powered his machine gun. Crit yeah. damage, you know, elite damage. All of this stuff was a thing in the game, which I think is dope. I like that that factor to to be to where everything affects everything. And then it gets you that point to where you have to build now. So now you're not just deleting stuff just to delete it. You got to keep because maybe you're going to use this one day, whatever, whatever. So. And another thing that's a positive in the game is what you just brought up, the whole builds thing, but not only just builds, but weapons. Mm. I, I'm i very um, discriminatory when it comes to weapons, and that's only because I go off of social norms or gaming norms. Okay. Like, oh, I'm a mid-terrain, I'm a mid-to-distance shooter, so I'm never going to pick up a submachine gun. Yeah. Like, uh, unless it's a, a decked out, maxed out vector. Yeah. Like, it's just, you know, that's just not how I play. It's it's going to be AK and, uh, you know, type of stuff. Yeah, long range stuff. Long range Medium stuff. Medium range, long Medium range. to long range. And preferably, uh, I like semi-automatic weapons or three bursts. That's, that's just personal thing for me. Um, Damn. See, we would make the perfect team. Because I like short range, in your face type guns. Yeah, and I'm, stuff, because mm-hmm. and I'm I'm cool with like running up and tapping the person, not killing them. They killing me, but then my teammate killing them Finishes. and me getting the assist because it just makes it easier that way. In a mm-hmm. sense, that's the the term by that is called trading. So uh, we win that trade in that regards, even though it's just it's still a one for one, but we still win the trading because it's gotcha. easier for you to get the trade. But yeah, there we go. I mean. Yeah, hey, no. So, so knowing that, side. right? Rolling back into, uh, rolling back into it, I um, accidentally used the automatic shotgun. Oh, they got those in there, bro. They got the barrel and everything, boy. When I tell you, I switched cheese the whole level, and the guy I was running with was like, "Bro, I feel like we're cheating. What gun is that?" <laughs> what are you it was doing? the ACS twelve, <laughs> and I'm just running getting tight on people boom 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 just clearing the whole i'm killing bosses i'm running up on them boom 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 but the reason i was not mad is i expect an automatic shotgun from that close to do that type to of do damage. that type of damage yeah. I, if it didn't i would have been mad yeah but then so when i realized how much fun that was because you know me I, i'm down to struggle yeah. for the sake of fun uh, I was like, well, let's see what else we got because now I'm ready. I'm open now. I'm like, oh, well, let's try what other weapons we got because it's either uh, what are the uh, modified sniper rifles or the what are they called? Um, the, 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 the marksman rifles. rifles. I'll, yeah. use the, I'll use the mid range marksman rifles. You know me, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I also used the Uzi for the first time. Bro. When I tell you I'm Swiss cheesing bosses' as armor, mm-hmm. the dude I was running with was like, what are you using? <laughs> I was like, it's the Uzi. <laughs> and, the Uzi. 
Hey, and I these are guns I just never use. So like, like it's remember how in Division One, like the uh the exotic version of those weapons had like a, a special name? Ooh. Like what they what they call the Uzi, the vert, like the vert, like <laughs> this is the vert. That'd be dope. <laughs> Bro, I just oh, man. It, it so the game is fun. I'm finding a crap ton of content. I'm nowhere. I think I'm all the hours I put in so far, I'm like 20% complete. Mm. And that's like overall. That I don't even think that's just like main story. Yeah. Um I uh the guns are there's a bunch of different guns, bunch of different stats, bunch of different builds. It's a lot for somebody like me to do. Yeah. You know, and and then I'm having fun. The enemies are out there working. They got aim out the wazoo. So and the AI is actually smart. Man. Because you last, Division 1. You getting, I'm like rolling, shooting, rolling. Because uh, there's, there's a such thing as a super smart, dumb AI. And remember mm-hmm. in Division 1, that's how it was. Like the, you telling me he could throw a grenade that far, but I can't. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Launching grenades so, way across the map. Only thing that's frustrating is how they shoot the gun versus how you shoot it and their aim. Yeah. Like here it is. I'm professional marksman trained. And th- this is a street thug holding a, a giant, holding an AK 47 <laughs> like a pistol sideways. <laughs> Shooting and running, hitting you in the head. <laughs> yeah, he's walking and aiming and tagging me. Like it it it's frustrating because mm-hmm. how much you have to do to get that same level of aim. But the guns shoot honest. If you, if I'm hitting you with a sniper rifle, even though it is a bullet sponge game, mm-hmm. but if I'm hitting you with a sniper rifle in the face, it does the amount of damage in comparison that you would expect. Okay. And then, like, I came across a bulldog. I got a, my sidearm as a freaking bulldog, and I'm just boom, boom, boom. I was running around for a while with that. And only um, only thing that stopped me from using it was the reload time. Yeah, but I'm having fun. Like I, I wish I would have brought my Xbox because the TV in this room is dope. I'm not used to hotel rooms having TVs like this. Uh, this is vicious. You've been playing it. I mean, I I, I want to play it. I just was waiting for the raids and stuff. Me, I'm a I'm a raider. I didn't realize I was a raider until De- Destiny One. But it's just it's hard to find a consistent team. Like if I had a consistent team of people, and I'm not that guy. Yeah. So if I had a consistent team of people to play games <laughs> that I play, or even in the realm, you know, I'd be all right. But even like doing LFG groups, sometimes that could be frustrating because, like, I, I'm cool with playing with people I know, making mistakes and laughing about it. But when I'm here just to get this shit done, and you taking up my time. And then bruh, you told me, bro. You I, told me you were good. Listen, like, let me tell you a story before we go on. I was in this raid last week on Destiny, right? Destiny Two, and Destiny Two has they they make a there's a gang of API apps and websites that you can use okay. to you know better yourself in the game or you know transfer over items and et cetera, et cetera. Well, there's a website that shows you how many times a person has raided. How many t- the fastest they've completed the raid, and uh, it also shows them like their last like fifteen matches. If it was a completed, if it was a completed or incomplete match. So I'm in this raid right with this dude, and we're playing, and uh, or with this group that found me, and one of the last guy that jumps in, they say, "Hey, how many times have you beat the raid?" He was like, "Oh yeah, I beat it like ten times." So I'm not even thinking I about it. Ten <laughs> times like the number one lie on earth. Like, bro, everybody say I do like ten times, bro. When I when oh, I, time. bro, when we started, we're playing, we're playing, and he's dying, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even thinking about it. He's just dying, and I'm reviving him, or somebody revives him, and we beat the first part, like after two wipes. Then we beat the second part, first time. Then the third part comes up, and um. It's like, uh, no, I'm sorry. We beat the first part. We did not beat the second part. So we get to the second part, and the dude is just dying. He, he's he's not doing his role right, and I'm like, what is going on? So I was like, hey, hey, bro, how many times did you say you beat, <laughs> beat this? He goes, yeah, no, nah, I beat it like 10 times, man. Like, I beat it. So I was like, 
Mm, fuck this. Let me check. Get on the website. Bring his name up. He ain't beat the damn Ray one time. He ain't beat it at all. Damn. So I so the, he dies again, right? And what, the leader of the chat was like, "Hey man, you keep dying. And you're not doing the 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 orb thing right. What are, what's going on, man?" He was like, "I don't know. I don't know." I was like, "I know." <laughs> He don't know what the fuck he doing. Excuse my language. <laughs> so everybody started laughing. I was like, yeah, he ain't beat the raid. So the dude starts laughing. He was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And he just thought it was funny. I'm like, man, I'm out, bro. I left. It was the worst. It just, that that's so toxic. Just say you ain't beat it. If you ain't beat it, you ain't beat it. Somebody will show you. But I want to put you in a simple, like me, whenever I would get picked up for a raid, it was they literally needed a body. Yeah, like they were like, "Look, bro, just do your best. Not to die. <laughs> we got this. Just survive." And, and I'm good at call outs. Yeah. Like if you tell me what's supposed to happen, and you're like, "Hey, I need y'all to call your call out." Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I can do that. I can bro, make it happen. You gotta do a raid, man. No, let me let me tell you. No, I don't. You got uh, to. No, because first and foremost, the I for one don't care enough, and I feel bad about that. Hell yeah, you should. Because there's people on there who truly, truly care. And then when I do get invested and things start going well, we end up never finishing. Bro. And, and I get so mad. Like, I don't know how many times on the first, uh, the very first one, what was it, Callus or whatever? Uh, yeah, uh, for De- Destiny 2. For yeah. Destiny 2. We've gotten to the tail end. I've got them down to almost like I would like half. Yeah. And and then somebody will just flop. And it won't even be me. So now mm. I'm mad with everybody else. Like, who's this trash ass dude? Like, who's this <laughs> Start like, I'm, shit. We, like I'm a pro. I'm like, I'm holding my own. I know what I yeah. like. Oh my god. Yeah, it's raids are raids can be toxic, but I'm telling you when when you once you learn, and this is my thing, once you learn the mechanics of a raid, just stick to the mechanic. You know it. Don't try to change nothing. Don't try to use nothing new. We're, we know what we're here for. We're not the type of people. We're not trying to speed run. We're not trying to break a record. <laughs> we just want the gear. I just want the loot. That's the it. I just I'm want the guns and the loot. That's it. So um, I tell people that all the time. Even people in my, my old clan, I used to say, listen, why we keep changing the way we do this? Stop changing it. Because now we're going to confuse everybody. Do it the way we've been doing it, and that's that. And the reason why I like raids so much is because um, it is that tr- that end-game content. It is hard. So now you're playing it. And then with raids, like six-man raids, everybody has a role. So whether your role is ad duty or your role is oracle duty or whatever duty or, you know, boss call control, it. what call of duty. <laughs> um you have a role and you just got to do your role. So I'm like he and even and then raids is where hero moments happen. And I've had a few hero moments that I love to talk about. But um, yeah, man, you should definitely raid, whether it's in division or destiny, just raid raid one time and complete it. Like it is a that is the feeling right there. I know for me, I was oh, man, I stood tall like <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, Atheon. Sit down. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. But um, that was life, man. But, but no, but but overall, you know, wrapping it up when it comes to the division two, I didn't think I would talk about it that long. Yeah. It's fun. I recommend it. Now, who knows how I feel about it next week? A uh, big update came out and it didn't completely break the game, which made me happy. Uh, yeah, they, that's when it fell short on the first one. It they, was the first major update, and then the game went. Uh, that's, that's just hey, that's the realm. The realm is updates every other week or every week, yeah. and it fixes something or it breaks something, and that's just life now. Moving on, now talk to me about what Call of Duty. What's going on? Well, you're you brought up a conspiracy theory. Yes, yeah, my conspiracy theory on why Activision over here firing people for no dang reason. And I believe it has something to do with Call of Duty franchising. Because Call of Duty is franchising next year. Which should be they will start their own Call of Duty League based off of cities. And and that's another point too that I didn't like. 
a lot of these organizations are going to have to change their names and come up with a specific name for their team. But it wasn't the, it wasn't the city that built their team. It was the organization. Mm-hmm. So now your favorite teams won't be like it, it won't be Phase Clan, the Call of Duty team for Phase. It's gonna be It'll Dallas be, Phase. Yeah, Phase Ohio Birds or some some like yeah. some weird thing like that. And I don't really like that. So uh, hopefully they can remedy that. Uh, but franchising next year for Call of Duty. Now, I'm not sure how much of you pay attention to the esports side of Call of Duty. Uh, I like it a lot. I find it very entertaining because these guys, I mean, these guys are play insane. I'm talking about stuff that the human, a, the regular human couldn't do. So um, they're planning on franchising next, next year. You're reading an article that was saying that they potentially be, could be selling these spots for $25 million dollars a spot american so um that's a lot of money and i believe actually i don't think it is i think so for call of duty uh for call of duty it is call of duty hasn't been the same game it's been since black ops 2 i think black ops 2 was like the glory glory days of call of duty esports ever since then it's just been on a slow decline with some sporadic nose dives with certain titles. So $25 million for a spot, I believe that's a lot. Um and I don't and then they then we don't know what they're offering, what they're telling people, what these the the requirements for these teams. So we don't know. We, we know that you, oh go ahead. Let me tell you why I feel this won't be a problem at all and why that's gonna be cheap. Because for the same way 2K continuously sells. Call of Duty is one of those staple gaming in the household every holiday season. You're right. Um, so knowing that, knowing that hell or sucky game, this game is going to sell at a, it's going to go gold. It's going to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all these things are going to happen regardless of reviews, regardless of which I think so version. Too. And, and knowing that $25 million but you, you know you know why? Okay, so looking from your angle, yes, that's a lot. Phase Clan, who knows if all these big, big industry companies really have twenty five to drop on a Call of Duty franchise team? Yeah. But guess who does? Your Shacks, your Rick Foxes, mm-hmm. your. So this is I personally think just from the little bit I read about it because this is my today is my first time really hearing about this. Yeah. Um. Is this is opening up to make it more mainstream. This ain't for the community. This is for the at large. Yeah. Now the the okay. So because that's cheap to a Rick Fox. To yeah. A Shaq, and to I don't. A, I don't. Teams. Okay. So now, with you saying that, Call of Duty won't last if the big name teams don't make it into the league. I think mm-hmm. the big name teams have the money for these spots so your optic games your phase clans your team envious Mm -hmm. they got the money for it i'm not worried about that if now say if it was outrageous and they didn't have it if optic gaming leaves the call of duty scene call of duty dies and i say that with the utmost confidence in the world because to be honest they're the reason why like if you just pay attention to streams when Optic Gaming is playing, that's when they hit the peak of viewership. When they're not playing, they don't get that same viewership until the championship match. So, mm-hmm. and that's just, that is consistently, even when they lose consistently, that's what happens. So, yeah, you're right. These teams do have the, these other organizations and these other, you know, big name players have the money for it. But if these teams don't make it in the league, Call of Duty is dead. But I, I more so am talking about viewership, about the glory days of Call of Duty. Call of Duty was once at the top, up there with your CSGOs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's not there anymore. It's not there unless there's an event going on. And even when there's an event going on, game your your Fortnites and your Apex Legends still beat it out in viewership. So that's still a thing to think about. Also, with Call of Duty... Not, with Call of Duty not having the 
the not being at the the point where where it should be, I believe. Um, who knows what the viewership is going to be like on a week on a weekly basis? Franchise map matching. Sure. Think about Overwatch. Overwatch. That's when they see their most viewerships. You mm-hmm. know, but they blow the numbers for the Call of Duty World League out of this world. Sure. So. We got to think about that too. You're going to now you have to pay for production. Now you got to pay for this. You got to pay for that. This is on a weekly basis thing now. Now w- these teams are they flying out to different places every week? Now let's now let's flip it. We already know the level of sponsorship that Call of Duty brings with it. Mm-hmm. Whether it's different candy companies, whether it's do. Monster, whether it's different sodas cuz I Jack know every time a Call of Duty comes out Every time I go to a gas station, all of a sudden I'm seeing the Call of Duty logo on top of everything from Dr. Pepper Mm -hmm. to Monster to Butterfinger. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm being dramatic with the Butterfinger, but it just, just (laughs) trying to make these Butterfingers. (laughs) Um, Right. But so knowing, I, I really, I think the reason Call of Duty, that another reason I think this is going to blow up and do great is because. How many people? I think it'd be easier to count how many people don't have Call of Duty in their house. Oh yeah, no, and that and that, but that and that, I agree with that. But that's the it's a big enough mainstream acceptable name that that point is made from the casual everyday player. True. My my point is the 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 money that they have to put into the esports side of it because mm-hmm. now you. You put the money into creating these franchise. You think about it. They had to change the layout of the game. The yes. Call of Duty went from a six v six to a five v five. Why? Because competitive went to five v five. So the game is going either they're going to have to create two games a year, one for yeah. competitive, one for the casual at home player, and make money both ways, or they're going to have to create it and have a that healthy medium where these teams can still play the game that they love but they still get the competitive side to it. I don't think Call of Duty is going to ever drop off like that. Just like how yeah. you brought up Madden and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um I think they will st- still reign their supreme spot when it comes to that. I just think it's going to be with the esports side of it, I'm not too much sold on it because of the fact that First of all, it's your first time in it. Second of all, you're not doing the numbers that you used to do. You, I, you, you watch people bash the game more than they play the game, but they still play the game. So and that is, you know, that's that. With the competitive side, though, it's it's more money that they gonna have to put up front. Remember, they're they they have the prize pool. The prize pool ain't your these local events anymore they're not umg they're not mlg which mlg i think is a part of cwl but they're not these gfinity major these, league gaming and breakdown cwl uh the call of duty world league okay just and, for those who don't know you know so they're not those anymore because that's how these players were making money they were paying re- to register into a tournament playing for these big name company or big yeah i guess you could say big name companies that were helming said tournament and that the prize pool was put up by them call of duty's gonna have to put up the prize pool the prize pool is going now and now and which they've kind of been preparing for these players are being paid salaries Mm -hmm. they can't they can't they're gonna have to abide by call of duty's rules some sort some sort way whether it's being able to stream because I don't know if you knew this, but they couldn't even stream. The players couldn't stream anything when the Call of Duty, when, uh, if you were in the the league, you couldn't stream while the league was playing. Because you would take away from viewership. Exactly. So they, they were like, yeah, you could, you can't do it. So now you're taking, now you're taking money out they, out they mouth now. So now these people who are building brands on Twitch or YouTube or whatever, they can't do it now because you say, hey, listen, you're in the league, so you can't do that. So they, they can't, and then, which Call of Duty, which was cool, they came to a medium and said, listen, y'all can stream the matches, and y'all can stream now, y'all can, and y'all can even stream the matches. So it it was a huge difference. Even even when I was watching Dr. Dr. Disrespect uh, stream and the Call of Duty World League was going on, and he was beating the World League out in viewerships. So it's... 
it's just not there yet. Uh, they need to get back. They need to figure out a way to get back to have a healthy medium of both casual play and competitive play. Because now the game is going to be so competitive. It's going to be like CSGO where it's going to be all c competitive. And if you play the game, you're a competitive player. And that's that. There is going to be no casual lobby anymore. No one's going to want to play with those rule sets anymore. But my main point. Oh, go ahead. Were you about to say something? Well, you know what, bro? Um, hearing hearing what you're saying, and I'm only saying this because I just came back from a conference not that long this past weekend. Yeah, it sounds like you're talking from a a, a finite perspective, as in which for the most part it is true. There's only so many people watching, so many things. Yes, yeah. you know that's that's a fact. But in terms of internet space and growth and opportunity. Even if this wasn't Call of Duty, you could put any name, any game in front of that franchise spots going for whatever million. There's a space for that. I just yeah, found yeah. out people, there's a whole league of people racing drones that's getting ready to go to this level. Yeah. You Hell, know what we I mean? can talk about people playing tag. People play yes. competitive tag. <laughs> yes. So knowing people watch people CrossFit, CrossFit <laughs> competitions. Yeah. Like. So knowing knowing all of these other things exist, I love that you're you're coming from a place of passion, and um, you truly know this, and you're coming from the inside. Yeah, I, yeah, you could say look, that. I'm looking at it from, shit, that sounds dope. And no, and I think right. okay, so I guess I came off wrong then because I think it's dope, and I'm not saying that it can't work. I just since you. When you come from that, or like when you, we all, yeah, I'm pretty sure we all played in. Call of Duty. We all understand Call of Duty, the concept of it being an arena shooter, and these certain guns do this, and being able to shoot, hit registration, all of that. We all understand that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the game won't. I think the. I don't think the game won't succeed. I think it will succeed. My point is, is that, um, with it being so upfront now, I think we. It should have been this Call of Duty should have been one of the first games to franchise Very and do true. all of this stuff. Um, so with it I taking a, with, with it taking steps back and then now it's trying to take seventeen jumps forward all at once. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Oh yeah, I, I one hundred percent rock with this idea. You know, working now. I just think that I don't. I think it's going to work at some point. It's gonna fit. It's gonna mesh. It's gonna come together. And then it's Activision. It's not yeah. I like. I'm. It's not no. It's not your everyday. You know, developer or publisher. It's Activision. This it gotta work now. This bring this comes full circle back to my point. Why they um why Activision released eight percent of their workforce was because of that because. All this money that they about to drop out into into these franchising spots and all of this stuff, they are gonna have to figure this out. I think taking in the money that they're gonna be selling for these franchising spots, they need to figure out. Okay, cool. How much money are we gonna make? This is and this is my conspiracy theory. I could be wrong. This isn't fact. This isn't actual factual. But uh, with them taking the risk that they're taking with making franchise spots, because the remedy, the 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 uh the field works now it works now how it's set up and it works just fine going into franchise spots you're gonna have to figure out okay are we gonna build an arena are we gonna use keep using ohio's arena we're gonna have to think about taxes for these players we're gonna have to think about okay are we gonna go with the league of legends side of everything where these these teams are gonna have a budget and they can't go over this budget just like with your any any other sport that you're thinking Major about. Sports, yeah. So now it's just this is these are the plans, these are the things that you're gonna have to it's a lot of money moving all over the place. So this that's why I believe that they had to that you know, I well, I don't think they had to. I think they made the move that's to release sake. those yeah, exactly. So they can uh uh you know make as much money as possible. So and you know that's that that's always something that throws even me off. with the I success of Apex Legends. That's that was the 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 weird part. A free to play game with all of this success, it's almost up there with Fortnite. And they yeah. still said we gotta drop bang. Yeah, 
you know it, it, it's it's always weird that when i hear situations like that i'm like damn business mm-hmm. um it's cutthroat it, it's very cutthroat and <sighs> i wonder i really wonder when it comes to games when it comes to these type of games is this just the new way and for the most part it probably will be yeah because you got to think like you said you made a solid point call of duty should have been the first to do this not the last yeah. or not middle and third like there's no way they should have they should have been to this point i'm actually shocked um certain games like world of warcraft they don't need to but i'm i'm shocked they never had any type of divisional leagues or nothing like i mean yeah. you don't need it but that would have been dope to watch some yeah uh, i mean i i like i said I'm, I'm more so i'm hip to the fact that the gaming space like the whole entity not the many communities within the gaming space the gaming space is at the point now where we got franchise teams Fra- legit, these like, pe- people are with- to- oh, go ahead excuse me i went to WonderCon. And people are walking around with their Valiant shirts on. Right. Like, it, it's it's real out here. Like, you know, any given moment, you're going somewhere, you can catch somebody in a Valiant. And I forgot what San Francisco's team is called. Um, the orange one. Um, yeah, you got people walking around in optic jerseys. And yeah, like, jerseys. this is real. They're oh, and then all the local colleges having their gaming. Have, um, ex- that's even dope, too. So mm-hmm. it's you more so you get to thinking about how like we're like the the ceiling for this is so high that all they have to do is just keep up with it because people are going to play your games these games are going to be played and people will all there's always it's always competition at some point some kid is always telling another kid i'm better than you and some kid is always getting wrecked in a 1v1 somebody's always telling somebody hey man you should play professionally you should hey come play gbs with me it's i would so many videos of of uh i've watched so many videos and so many interviews of like professional players and they always say in specifically call of duty players they always say the same thing oh i just started playing pubs and then i was dropping 100 kills in the match and someone was like hey let's just put, you want to play some gbs there's always some random person that's still not in the league saying, hey, let's play some GBs. And you play GBs, and then you're stomping kids, and you're you're winning these online tournaments, making this money, and then finally you just get picked up by a team. Anybody can do it. As if yep. you put the time into it, anybody can do it. So um, I'm I'm proud and happy for the space. I can't wait for it to, to see what it, where it becomes. I hope that I get to see, like, it – at, to a point where it's on TV or as a like a like a a consistent thing. On the show. You see what I'm saying? Like where yeah. where now you have to hire now you have to hire casters for specifically gaming. You see what I'm saying? Now you have to do stats and stuff for gaming. You know how dope that's going to be? And that's only amazing to me because I'm a gamer. I like video games. Yeah. You know, so did I ever did I ever tell you I shot cast at a Fortnite tournament? Yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, that was absolute bonkers. <laughs> I did not know how hard it was to sit and talk for two hours. I was listening to a caster talk about like how he he's able to cast um, Call of Duty, and he in his stream he what he did was he practices he practiced in his stream, so he would watch other hear. people's and then practice, but. He put just the amount of money, the same amount of time as professional players playing the game. He puts that same amount of time playing the game as well because now he needs to learn the spots. He needs yeah. to learn the call outs. He needs to be just like football. If you never played football, but you wa- you probably watched as much football as somebody played to be able to break down a play, call out a certain situation, be able to understand what's happening. Same difference here. Or this, it's the same situation here. You literally play the game just as much as they play the game. You understand the call outs. You understand the map, map awareness. You understand a flank. You understand what's going on. And you're able to, to actually just say it now. So, um, yeah, I... You better go play a gang of Fortnite. <laughs> hey, no, and let me tell you, and that's what was the hardest part before we roll into this last segment. That was the hardest part was not because I don't know the weapons. Yeah. Because I don't know what the certain grenades and tools and accessories do. Because I don't know the map. Mm-hmm. 
I was winging the hell out of it. it <laughs> whatever I was saying, it was entertaining. Yeah. And then thank God, I don't know how many people are in the earpieces, but I had somebody shooting me private messages, watching other matches and updating me like so-and-so got a kill. So and so's knocked. Okay. So and so, like it was intense. I yeah. was like, oh. So I'm sitting here trying to look at the camera, but I'm really getting feeded information like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know what the heck I'm talking <laughs> about, but I know. Where's well Dusty to Lodge? Run my I don't mouth know where Dusty Lodge like is at. <laughs> Bro, it was I, I honestly, it it gave me a lot of respect for casters. Period. Yeah. Because you either gotta have a deep passion for it. Or you got to be the best BS or on earth. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's there's no way around it. Some of them are great. Uh, some mm-hmm. of them are some of them are real great. I think since they've been doing like the esports game awards or whatever it's called, I think it's just called the game awards. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, they been the first guy to win it, like caster of the year. His name was like Courage or something like that. Like, and he joined. He recently joined Optic, but then he was getting. He got so big on and so fast on YouTube or Twitch that he had to leave the brand of Optic because of of conflict of interest with sponsorships. Mm. So I bring him up because he won Caster of the Year. Like that is a thing. That is a full on reward. That goes on your resume. <laughs> yeah. I won caster of the year. He was yep. even casting Fortnite tournaments because that's the game he was playing. The other guy that won it, I, f- I believe his name was, I forget his name, but he was a cool, funny cat and he won it. And the dude was just dope. I mean, look at even look at Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Disrespect won streamer of the year mm-hmm. and his and his. that's why he goes by the name two time because he won it twice. So, um, it's it's just amazing. All in all, gaming, the space of gaming now is it's in a, a dope spot, and I can't wait to see, um, you know, where it goes from here. You know, what I'm saying this is just the beginning of it. So, uh, damn, it looked like we hit our our limit. We hit our stride, um, bro. Now, real quick, jump into the uh, the grain of salt moment. Uh, take this with a big grain of salt, but we uh, we came across some leak information. Leaked information on how, how potentially Destiny leaked that uh, PS4 and the new X or PS5 and the new Xbox. I think it's what what is it? Uh, Project X Scar- or Project Scarlet? It's supposed to be released in 2020. Um, now, was it Destiny who released this? Destiny or- is the, the leak source is a he's a part of the Destiny community. His name is Anon Ananon of the Nine. He uh he's a leaker. He just leaks stuff. Now he's been credible in the past and he leaked some information on the new Destiny. Now, now okay, so this is how I came to that conclusion. That potentially he leaked when PlayStation Five and the new Xbox was coming out. Uh, he reported that the new Destiny Three is supposed to come out 2020 alongside with the new consoles. Now, like I said, with this dude being and now and then he he did go dark and somebody did take over the posting that he was doing. I won't go too much into that, but the the information still stems from him since he's reporting that it's a credible source because. He's the one that told us that call it or that uh, th- that Destiny Two was gonna get the Thorn back. That Destiny Two was also getting the Hawk Moon back. That Destiny Two, he, these are he, guns, man. Yeah, it, these are guns inside the game. And uh, he also reported on a lot of other things that came to be true within the Destiny community. So if he's saying that Destiny Three is supposed to come out 2020 alongside the new consoles. The new consoles will be here next year. So are we prepared for that? Are you prepared for the new consoles? It's time. For one, it is time. Um, it's been that time frame. And then there's been a bunch of big games. Uh, and we're branching way over our time. But there's been a bunch of big games such as Starfield, such mm-hmm. as... Um, like I even thought Days Gone was going to get pushed back. They might uh, as well. if this ki- If this is the case, they might as well. I hope not, because it's supposed to come out in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, but I do understand. Um, I'm excited. I, I am, too. I'm I don't my know pocket if I'll be day one. 
if I get my business my business stuff in order, and uh, it's, it's uh, shout out it's Nerds my, Noir and Nerds uh, Noir. the link is in the description below. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nerds Noir or its parent company may be buying the new uh, the new console. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Tax right off. Tax right <laughs> off. Oh man, that's that's talking too much. Shop. Sh- shameless plugs here, people. Shame- shameless plugs. Oh, nerds new R. <laughs> Parent company in the works. But yeah. um, yeah, man, I'm Baron J six seven, bro. I'm T Jones, and uh, man, shout out to everybody who's been supportive of Nerds New R. Shout out to everybody who's been supportive of us. Those listening, those following us through Tone Deaf Network. And shout out to Tone Deaf and the family. Really appreciate what they do, blasting us out into the ether across the universe. And yeah, that's all I got to say. That's all. Gonna do it, man. Peace out. Peace.